the automotive industry is undergoing some of its biggest changes in history. For more than 100 years the vast majority of cars have run on gasoline now EVs are slowly but surely gaining ground. With increased electrification of vehicles, there is so much advancement going on in this space because for a long time vehicles didn't change much but with the rise of EVs, hybrids, and driverless cars there is so much to learn and be trained on that it is a whole new career on its own. Electric vehicles are not built or serviced the same way as internal combustion engine vehicles because there are no radiators, crankshafts, spark plugs, oil changes or fuel lines etc. running through them. The single most important component of an electric vehicle is the battery. The technological shift towards cars powered by batteries means that manufacturing and servicing electric vehicles require a different set of skills because the cars of today are built around computers and softwares. Therefore, workers with specialized knowledge on how batteries operate are required to build today's cars but there are only a handful of such workers. Similarly, battery manufacturers around the world are facing a growing problem, they've got a huge talent crunch on their hands. The battery sector is facing a serious shortage of battery experts and it is a brewing storm that threatens to throw a wrench in the plans of several EV companies and nations attempting to address climate change by turning to electric vehicles. A survey conducted by the Open Access Battery Intelligence Platform, Voltaic, reports that 4 in 10 respondents mentioned a shortage of battery engineers as a constraint on their development efforts. According to the same report, the top reason, cited by 38% of respondents, for inefficiencies in existing battery processes is a lack of battery engineers. But why is there a shortage of battery engineers and is this an opportunity or a problem? Hello friends, welcome to The Electrochemist, thank you for tuning into the channel, on this channel we discuss all things battery development including existing lithium-ion batteries, new and emerging battery systems, battery supply chain, battery production, and battery application. If this is something that interests you, please subscribe to this channel and keeping watching. Although the global battery price has been on a long-term decline trajectory, battery shortage still poses a threat to the global production of EVs. There aren't enough batteries to electrify all cars at the rate the automotive industry is developing. Due to supply chain issues and other logistical challenges, battery manufacturers are not able to produce enough batteries to supply all the EV companies. The shortage of battery experts begins at the very start of the supply chain. Most of the world's batteries are manufactured in Asia. According to Statista's 2020 report, Korea's LG and China's CATL each accounted for just over a quarter of the worldwide lithium battery market, while Japan's Panasonic supplied just more than 20%. Korea's top three EV battery manufacturers all rank in the top six global manufacturers, controlling as much as a third of the global EV battery market. They include LG Energy Solution, LG ES, SK Innovation, and Samsung SDI Co LTD. Based on a report by the Korea Battery Industry Association, there is a shortage of approximately 3,000 graduate degree-level talents for roles in research and design, among others. Collectively, the three giants only have around 19,000 employees. According to Reuters, these large Asian corporations are all struggling to fulfill rising demand for research and technical personnel due to the shortage of battery experts. This could hamper the global push towards zero-emission transportation infrastructure since many of these EV battery manufacturers serve billion-dollar clients such as Tesla, Volkswagen, and Ford, among others. Several governments and automotive companies have been working hard to address this demand for battery production and electrification of vehicles as China's battery dominance is largely seen as a threat to national security. The US government along with major automakers such as Ford, GM and Stellantis have spent billions to shift battery cell manufacture back to the US, in order to meet what is anticipated to be rapidly expanding demand for electric vehicles over the next decade. Countries such as India are also also looking to boost production and development in EV tech, including batteries, with a generous boost of 3.5 billion US dollars in incentives for the sector. Taiwan, too, is cranking up the production of their EV batteries. This rapid development of battery production and electric vehicles is gradually creating a new workforce demand because the engineers required to work in these factories require a specific set of skills that are not abundant in the job market today. The typical person working on the factory floor of an automotive company today has at least two, three-year degree on manufacturing technology whereas the average worker on an internal combustion engine manufacturing plant only had an eight-grade certificate. Additionally, to work as a battery engineer in a cell production plant or in an electric vehicle manufacturing plant requires more than a simple engineering degree. Specific skills and expertise are required, and these can only be developed through training in an actual battery plant because there is often a big gap between the university research and its output in terms of research publications when compared to what is happening in the industry. 
There are also very few schools that teach the practical industry relevant skills for battery manufacturing today therefore the established legacy automakers help themselves to the few graduates that have these skills. The arrival of new technology such as solid-state batteries also means that giants in the automotive scene are increasingly in need of more battery engineers with the necessary skills and training to continue the advancement of these cutting-edge technologies. It is notoriously tough to recruit battery engineers and it is also tough to retain them because existing employees of EV and battery startups are constantly being aggressively poached by competitors dangling bigger carrots. Unlike auto technicians whose average salary in 2021 was about $47,990, the salary of battery engineers is almost double this amount. The average annual salary in South Korea is approximately 37.4 million won, 2019, but fresh doctorate holders who are battery specialists can earn almost triple that amount, 100 million won, 85,000 US dollars. For those below, and with a few years of experience can, on average, earn 80 million won, reports Reuters. Additionally, battery engineers can get a proper W-2 with permanent positions and stable salary unlike technicians who get flat rate work which is not so stable. The job of battery engineers also come with benefits such as individual health insurance, 401k etc. Although, large dealership groups or service chains like Ford and others can provide similar benefits, most automotive shops do not have these benefits for their technicians. There is no real career path and direction for auto technicians, but this is not the case for battery engineers who can have a progressive career over several years of working in the industry. Despite all these benefits, it is still difficult to get highly skilled battery engineers to support the insatiable need for batteries to fulfill our demand for electric vehicles and other battery-powered means of transport. Interestingly, recent data from Clean Technica shows that battery manufacturing is creating lots of jobs for people with a university degree and otherwise in some cases. The opportunities for jobs in the battery industry cuts across different pathways in line with the battery value chain. Candidates with university degrees or white-collar professionals as well as those who only have a vocational training or trades can get jobs in different sections of the cell production plant starting with raw material and slurry preparation to applications and battery recycling. I have personally seen several jobs like these advertised on platforms like LinkedIn and others like these ones shown here and some of these jobs have been posted for a long time but have not been filled. According to Verdict's analysis of millions of online job advertisements, battery jobs took the longest to fill in the second quarter of 2022. Battery jobs were the hardest to recruit for among technology and communications companies in the same year. Due to this talent crunch a lot of these companies have had to look overseas and many of these applicants apply to American companies through the US H-1B visa. This plot shows the heat map of H-1B applications submitted between January 2022 to April 2022 for battery-related companies. Research of salaries indicated on the H-1B job applications submitted during this period for battery-related companies also show that these jobs offered considerably well although there is a large variability in base salaries across different companies and roles. These trends have also proven to be the same in many countries that have battery-related companies recruiting for battery engineers. The future certainly looks bright for people who intend to apply for jobs in battery and electric vehicle manufacturing considering all the investments coming from the government and automotive companies in the US and globally. President Biden's launch of the American Battery Materials Initiative, the bipartisan infrastructure law alongside $2.8 billion in grants from DOE to build out the battery mineral and material supply chain has seen many companies come up with plans to build megawatt and gigawatt factories across the US. So, what are the solutions to the battery expert shortage and how can you benefit from this opportunity? Since this is not a problem that companies can simply hire their way out of because there just aren't enough battery experts and governments prefer to hire its citizens in key industries, it is imperative to seek viable solutions to the battery expert talent crunch. One approach that has been embraced by companies globally is education and training. This includes retraining existing workforce, recruiting and training non-battery engineers, developing community college programs, and providing training of specific industry-required skills for bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degree candidates. As an example, Panasonic has encountered an acute scarcity of battery experts and battery engineers to keep their Gigafactory in Nevada operating. Therefore, the company has resorted to recruiting and retraining of non-battery engineers, chiefly chemical engineers. And even this is a stopgap solution at best because, demand is far outstripping supply when it comes to chemical engineers with lithium-ion experience, says Alan Swan, the head of Panasonic's US battery manufacturing unit based inside the Tesla Gigafactory. Other nations and companies around the world are also resorting to the same decision, according to the European Battery Alliance Planning Group, 
Reskilling or upskilling is in need within the EU bloc as the battery industry needs 800,000 new workers by 2025. Data from an EU-funded report indicates that there is a sharpening demand for re-educating battery experts in the educational system as well as scaling up vocational training for technicians. The top Korean EV battery manufacturer by volume, LG Energy Solutions, plans to launch a new battery smart factory department at the Korea University and with guaranteed jobs for graduates to boot. According to an official at LG as reported by Reuters, recruiting external talent is as crucial as nurturing their own, a sentiment echoed by SK On and Samsung SD. So, do you see this talent crunch as an opportunity or a problem? Since new automotive factories will be highly automated, and workers will need more in-depth training to work on the floor, I see it as an opportunity for you to get trained and develop the necessary skills to make yourself well positioned to get hired in the battery and EV manufacturing industry. Since most of the specialized jobs occur at secondary factories, original equipment manufacturers or OEMs, people in other trades or areas of engineering and science should integrate themselves into the battery industry and learn the ropes in preparation for when the battery and EV revolution takes flight. Go for trainings and skill acquisitions because competence gets compensated. Unless we can make the change towards highly automated manufacturing of batteries and vehicles quickly, there will be bigger problems for us to deal with. Will you be a part of this new revolution? What do you think about this topic, please let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed this video, please show your support by smashing the like button, sharing this video with a friend and make sure to subscribe to this channel. I love you, I appreciate you, see you in the next video.